Hello, anyone can learn to coders. We will now continue our journey through HTML by actually introducing a little bit of CSS. If you recall from the first episode, I had shown you this example of a regular PDF. It's not a web page, just a regular report about Bitcoin. And I had explained at the time that there are two ways to describe such a report. We can describe it from a conceptual perspective. That is, on the top over here we have a headline, then we have author information, followed by an abstract, we have a subheader, then regular article content, and that a second way of describing the same thing would be from a visual perspective. So that we have large, bold words, small, non-bold words that are centered, a sort of medium-sized centered paragraph, another large, bold word, but not quite as large as the largest sentence on the top, and then medium-sized words. That's describing things from the visual perspective. And we had explained that HTML is all about the conceptual perspective. HTML describes the concepts on the page. CSS is about the visual perspective. CSS describes the way things appear. Let's go to JS Fiddle. This will be a web page advertising Joe the Dentist. So you see that we have a headline about Joe the Dentist, then a sort of subheadline about Joe, and then a regular paragraph that gives you a little bit of information about Joe the Dentist and why you may want to use him. Let's run this. And you can see that in the lower right hand box, you get pretty much what you expect, a large headline, here is our H2, here is our paragraph. And while a browser has defaults for each of these elements, you can totally control the way any element appears through CSS. In jsfiddle.net, you can actually enter CS code in the upper right hand box. Let me show you some CSS examples so you'll be able to get the idea of how CSS works. Let's just say that we wanted to change this show the dentist headline, this H1, and make it blue instead of the default black. So we would say H1 in that we are about to describe how we want all H1s on the page to look. That's followed by curly braces. And then in between, we would set a number of what's called rules, basically details on how these words should appear. For right now, all I'm going to do is put in one rule that H1s should be blue. To do so, we'd say color colon blue, which should then be followed by a semicolon as all CSS rules need to end with a semicolon. If we would now run this again, you can see that our H1, Joe the Dentist, is now blue instead of black. Moving right along, let's say we wanted to change the H2 and make it not bold. By default, H2s are bold. Let's make it not bold. So let's create another CSS rule. So we go to another line. We'll say H2, curly braces. And the CSS for this is font weight. And we will say that it's normal. If we run that, we could see that this H2 is no longer bold. Now, if we wanted to make the paragraph bold at this point, we would do something very similar. We create yet another CSS rule about paragraph tags and say that the font weight is bold. And if we run that, we can see that this main paragraph is now bold. Let me show you some other things we can do with CSS in terms of text. We can change the size of the font. So let's make the H1 bigger. Let's make it 300 pixels. So we say 300 px. Whoa, OK, it's a little too big. Well, let's see what happens if we do 100 pixels. Let's make it even smaller. OK, that's better. You'll see that the best way to learn DSS is simply through trial and error. And even as a professional, a lot of times there's a lot of trial and error involved with CSS because by definition, CSS is a tricky language because it is a language that describes visual things. So by definition, that's just a tricky proposition. But the good news is, is that you can pick up many of the basics pretty quickly. Let me show you another thing we can do with text. Right now, this H1 is pushed all the way to the left. But let's center it. To do that, we say text align center. Let's run that. And you can see that it's centered. Well, let's just say for some crazy reason we wanted to make the H2 pushed all the way to the right side. So we can do text align right. I'll run that. So that looks a little crazy, but it just shows you what we can do. 
Now there's no way that you'll ever guess all these attributes on your own. If you want to know how to do other things, let's say change the font, you're not going to be able to guess how to do so. You have to look up everything on Google. There's just so many different CSS properties and attributes, and you just have to look it all up in order to see both for the attribute names as well as what options you have. You might try to change the color to forest green, but guess what? CSS doesn't have such a color. So you basically have to do a lot of reference checking. Let's just leave this at green. That looks groovy. Let's move on to another important concept. Let's just say that we will have two paragraphs. Let's say that we're going to split up this paragraph into two. Let's run that. So we see that the browser renders that in two sections. Now, right now we have CSS rules that say that the font should be bold. What if we only wanted one of those two paragraphs to be bold? We're sort of stuck because if we take this away, both paragraphs will not be bold. And if we leave it in, both paragraphs are bold. So how do you deal with a situation like that? The answer to that is by taking advantage of some more HTML attributes. There are two primary ones used to deal with a problem like this. One is class and one is ID. Let's actually start with ID. The concept of ID is basically marking a particular HTML element as special. So let's say we wanted this last sentence of being the inventor of the dental wrench. Only that one should be bold. So we're going to add to it an HTML element of ID. So ID equals and then quotes. And then inside the quotes, we are going to give this any name that we want. Let's call it wrench. So now this paragraph is unique because this is the only paragraph that has an ID of wrench. The previous paragraph is just a regular paragraph. Now for the CSS, we will go and add something to this rule. Instead of this being a general rule for all P's, it's only going to be a rule for the P with the ID of wrench. To mark that in CSS, you use the pound sign, which is then followed by the name of the ID. If we now run this, you'll see that the first paragraph remains non-bold, but the second paragraph is bold. Now the thing about ID is that the rules of HTML are that you should only have one of any particular ID on any particular page. But that leads to another problem. So let's say we're going to break this up into three paragraphs. Let's fix this up. So we have paragraph one, paragraph two, and paragraph three. Let's run this. So we can see that the first two paragraphs are not bold and only the wrench one is bold. Let's say we wanted to make an additional change and make the first two paragraphs both be red. So you might be tempted to give both paragraphs an ID, the same ID, and then set a CSS rule over here that marks both of them as red. But again, the problem is, is that you're only supposed to have one of every ID on the same page. So an obvious approach would be to give each paragraph a different ID and then make an additional CSS rule for each of those IDs in the CSS and mark both of them as red. But there's actually a simpler approach, which is to use a class. You use a class very similarly to how you use an ID. Let's add a class to both of these paragraphs. Let's call the class regular paragraph. And I'm going to add this class to both of these paragraphs. Now, unlike an ID, a class is allowed to belong to multiple elements on the same page. So let's create a rule in the CSS for paragraphs that have the class of regular paragraph. Now, whereas you use the pound sign to indicate ID with CSS, you use a period to mark a class. Let's make the color red. And if we do that, you can see that we get exactly what we want. The first two paragraphs are red, and the third paragraph is bold. I know that there's a lot to take in over here, but the more you practice, the more this will become second nature to you.